Wednesday night and election day, you voters in those battleground states better buckle up. You are very likely to get bombarded with political advertising if it hasn't happened already, especially from Hillary Clinton's and Donald Trump's campaigns. States like Ohio, for example, where a brand new Wall Street Journal NBC News Marist College poll finds Trump leading by one point, 42 to 41 percent. And then there's North Carolina. That same poll finds Clinton up by four points, 45 to Trump's 41 percent. Joining me right now is Frank Luntz. He is the pollster and Fox News contributor that we all watch. Frank, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, glad to. I, I don't know if I'm glad to be part of this election cycle, but I'm glad to be here this morning. <laughs> it is, really has been extraordinary, hasn't it, Frank? So first, these polls. How extraordinary is it to you that after all of this that we have seen and heard and reported on around the Trump campaign last couple of weeks, he's only down by four points? What does that say? It tells me that Hillary Clinton is still incredibly unliked and that millions of Americans do not want to vote for her. But the same could be said for Donald Trump. Let me give you three key statistics. Number one, we've never had a campaign where both party candidates have more than 50 percent who dislike them. Number two, we've never had a situation where one out of four voters are going to vote for someone who they dislike on Election Day. And number three, there is really only about three percent left that can move in either direction and another three or four percent who are uncommitted. They have a preference, but they're not yet ready to make that commitment. And so Wednesday night is going to determine this election. Donald Trump will need an awesome, awesome performance if he is to become credible and have the chance of winning in November. So what do you hear from the, the focus groups that you speak with in terms of that? Do they believe it's possible? What do they want to see? Well, they want to see what the candidates are for, not what they're against. And they can't stand the advertising. So I brought with me two examples. The first one I want to start with is the Trump ad against Hillary Clinton that really upsets voters because they think that it goes too far, and yet they actually believe the information in the ad. Let's take a look. Extremely careless. The email system was breached by hostile actors. Gross negligence. Hillary Clinton put our national security at risk, and she's still lying. Director Comey said that my answers were truthful. That's not truth. Even the Washington Post says Hillary Clinton lied, comparing her to Pinocchio. I may have short-circuited it, and for that, I... Uh... Careless, reckless, crooked. Putting her interests ahead of national security. Don't let Hillary Clinton do it again. 68% wow. of Americans, 68% believe that Hillary Clinton does not have the honesty and integrity to be president. In all the time that that question has been asked, no modern candidate has ever had a higher percentage of people rejecting their integrity. But now let me show you the Clinton ad against Donald Trump that once again upsets a lot of people and yet they still believe the content. Let's take a look. I think my strongest asset maybe by far is my temperament I'd like to punch him in the face i'll tell you i would bomb the shit out of him i could stand in the middle of fifth avenue and shoot somebody and i wouldn't lose any voters okay and you can tell them to go themselves get them out of here get them out of here get the hell out of here it's 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 amazing <laughs> I mean, when we showed the ad, people were laughing. I can see your reaction to it. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Mm. And this is the campaign, and this is why the public cannot wait for this whole thing to be over. Mm. It feels like Halloween and Groundhog Day every single day of the year. So what do you, what's the most in question, important question that you ask your focus groups when actually looking at them to vote on Election Day? What do you think is going to really move them on Election Day? Who? Do, well, first thing is, the, the thing that candidates need to answer and they haven't is what's the very first thing they're going to do on day one? They take the oath of office at noon. They get to the White House at about 3.30 or 4 p.m. What is the very first thing they do? And second is, who do you want to wake up to on Wednesday after the election? At 6 a.m., your alarm clock goes off, the TV comes on. Who do you want to be listening to on that day and every day for the next four years? I have to tell you, Maria, I would have thought that Hillary Clinton would have had this wrapped up. Everything that I've learned in the 30 years that I have been doing this says that she should be the next president. And yet I continue to have doubts because she cannot close it. There are too many concerns, too many hesitations, too much anxiety about her as a person. Hmm. And yet they're not willing to support Donald Trump 
because they do question his temperament. They do question whether he has the personal skills to be the commander in chief. But even supporters of Donald Trump would say, you know what, it's not necessarily the man only, it's the movement. People want to see a breakup of what has been in place for a long time, and they see that as corruption. You are so correct. In fact, you hit it. Yeah. Those are exactly what they would say. But here's what they then say. But Donald Trump talks too much about himself and not enough about changing, about breaking up Washington and starting from the beginning. Yeah. Trump needs to change his tone in the next 24 days. <laughs> well, we'll see if he can do it Wednesday night. Frank, always a pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure. We'll see Thanks. you soon, Frank Lund. So what is the relationship now with Donald Trump and the GOP? Will it change in the coming weeks? Up next, former Speaker of the House Newt Gingrich will join me as we look ahead on Sunday Morning Futures. We'll be right back.